The subject of this video is the GDL82 system configuration procedure using the GDL8X install tool. The previous video in this series covers where you obtain the GDL8X install tool as well as how to install it on your computer. Be sure to view that video prior to this one. In this video, we'll cover using the install tool to configure your GDL82 installation. Remember, the information in this video never replaces or supersedes information and procedures shown in the GDL82 installation manual. Before we begin, we want to make sure that the GDL82 is not receiving power, so check the aircraft's master switch to ensure it is in the off position. Then we'll use a USB-A to a USB-B interface cable to connect our laptop computer to the connector cable that's attached to the GDL82. Now we can apply power to the GDL82 and then start up the GDL8X install tool on our computer. You will see a GDL8X install tool selection window appear on the desktop. In that you will select the GDL82 button. After selecting the unit type, a larger install tool window will show up on the screen. Under the word Configuration, click on System and go to that page. The first item to enter is the tail number field. Enter that and then you're offered a button to press to compute the ICAO address. Now this works with U.S. registered aircraft, so if your aircraft is not U.S. registered, you'll need to manually enter the ICAO address provided in the aircraft's registration documents. This will be a six-digit hex code. The next entry is the emitter category. Here you have only two choices, light, meaning less than 15,000 pounds maximum gross weight, or rotorcraft, which is self-explanatory. The next entry is for the stall speed. Enter the stall speed for air-ground determination corresponding to the aircraft landing configuration stall speed known as VS0. The next entry selects the squat switch configuration. There are three possibilities. Number one, not installed. Number two, installed providing a grounded input on the ground. And number three, installed providing a grounded input when the aircraft is airborne. Choose the one that applies to your aircraft. The next entry selects the transponder's VFR squawk code. This squawk code may vary by country of registration, but for the U.S. this will be 1200. The setting is used by the UAT anonymous mode feature, if that is enabled. The feature has the GDL-82 transmit a temporary address and flight ID while squawking VFR. The next entries deal with GPS setup. First is the source for the GPS with the following choices. Internal, which would be used if you purchased a GDL-82 with an internal GPS receiver. Another choice is GNS series consisting of GNS 400W or 500W series navigators. These must be WAS compatible units. The remaining choice is the ADS-B Plus Format 2, which would be the GTN 600 or 700 series or the GNS 480 Navigator. The second entry category under GPS is the Longitudinal Antenna Offset. For this entry, you must enter the offset distance in feet of the GPS antenna's center to the nose of the aircraft. The next entry is the Anonymous Mode Switch. This should be selected if you installed an Anonymous Mode Switch. The purpose of using the anonymous mode is to allow the flight crew to select the anonymous mode when the transponder is tuned to the VFR squawk code. The GDL-82 then transmits a temporary address rather than the assigned ICAO address code and also sends a temporary flight ID. This is an optional switch based on the desires of the aircraft operator. Next on the list is the 1090 ES Receive Capable option. This will be selected if the aircraft can receive 1090 extended squitter through an ADS-B in receiver. Check the documentation for the ADS-B device to ensure it is 1090 ES Receive capable. The last section is UAT Receive capable. This will be selected if the aircraft can receive the UAT frequency using an ADS-B in receiver. Again, check the documentation for the ADS-B device to ensure that it is UAT Receive capable. Once all configuration options are selected, power cycle the GDL-82 unit to apply the settings. If you wish to save the configuration settings, press the Save Configuration to File button and this will create a plain text file for logging purposes. The last button on this page is the Reset Configuration button used to reset all entries. Congratulations, you have now become familiar with all the configuration selections related to the GDL82 installation. 
This concludes the demonstration of the GDL82 install tool configuration settings. Please stay tuned for more helpful GDL82 videos as they become available. Thanks for watching and for buying Garmin.